Hi, Dave Mustang and Megadeth, welcoming you to another titanic edition of the heaviest rock show of the metal kind. Five Magics is the fourth song off Megadeth's 1990 magnum opus, Rust in Peace. It stands out in the Megadeth catalog mainly due to its themes of wizardry and magic, fantasy themes which are more reliably found in other genres of metal. But despite this, it retains the common theme present through most of Megadeth's songs, and also most thrash metal songs, which of course is rebelling against authority. Five Magics also has some rather unique songwriting containing essentially no repeating parts, besides the intro, but we'll get to that later. These factors, as well as just the pure outstanding riffage, make this song stand out amongst all the other Rust in Peace bangers. But just so everyone is clear, this deep dive will be using the 1990 original version, not the 2004 remixed remastered version. There are quite a few differences between the two versions, and if you want to hear some of my thoughts on the remasters, check out this video. But again, just to be clear, we will be using the 1990 OG version. Five Magics is my personal favorite track off Rest in Peace. Not only is the riffage and soloing absolutely peak, but the vocal performance has to be one of Dave's most powerful and unhinged he has ever given. I mean, just listen to this. Possessed with hellish torment! Possessed with hellish torment! Powerful groovy drumming from Nick Menza, Rest in Peace, and the excellent bass playing of David Ellison, who always holds down the rhythm section masterfully, gives this song its solid footing. The journey and the story the music portrays here is fantastic, and over its 5 minutes and 42 second runtime, the song develops and unfolds in masterful fashion. This song legitimately feels way shorter than it actually is, which to me is a hallmark of excellent songwriting. Today, we continue our deep dive into the songs of Rust and Peace with Five Magics. Before we start, I also have a video on Lucretia out as well, as well as a whole playlist of other metal song deep dives, so remember to go check them out after this video. Hit that like button and leave a comment, it really helps this channel grow and helps this video get shown to more people, and if you'd like my work, consider buying me a coffee. Anyways, self-shilling out of the way, let us first start off by looking at the position of the song in the context of the album. Five Magics is the fourth song following the three-piece combo of Holy Wars, Hangar 18, and Take No Prisoners. These three songs are essentially just 50 minutes of pure high-energy riffage and amazing solos. Take No Prisoners in particular could probably be a candidate for heaviest slash fastest Megadeth song. So, after 50 minutes of pure intense energy, the intro bass riff for Five Magics gives the listener a small reprieve before getting back to the intense thrash riffs. The intro for Five Magics is about two minutes long and gives the listener a chance to metaphorically catch their breath. The lull in energy makes the rest of the song seem that much more intense. Megadeth uses this technique three times on the album to great effect. The first, which is this song, then the intro to Poison Was The Cure, and of course Dawn Patrol, which you could just consider an intro to Rust In Peace Polaris. In each of these lower energy parts or songs, it is just the bass and drums doing most of the work, which when the guitars come back in with the riffs, it really makes them stand out. It is a subtle technique which lets this album breathe a little bit and makes the peak seem that much more higher. Now onto the song itself. Five Magics contains 14 riffs and 6 solos. The only parts which repeat are the intro section and the small motif from the beginning of the song which is then used again in the last solo section. Here I've broken up the song so you can see just how many riffs there are. And here are all the solos. Yeah. 
You know, in these deep dives, I don't usually talk much about song structure, beyond the typical death song structure, as you can see in the video about Spirit Crusher, but that does not mean that structure isn't important. At first glance, it seems that Five Magics has no structure and is simply a riff salad, but the parts I'll put together most definitely outline a story which has a structure in of itself. Also, who needs traditional verse-chorus song structure when you can write 14 of the best riffs known to man. Structure be damned if you can write good enough riffs, I say. For the most part, you can get away with riff salad song structures as long as your riffs are good enough and the whole song feels unified around a central theme or structure, which the song does. And of course, the central theme and story of the song is the acquisition and use of magical powers to defeat a quote, evil prince or abyss lord, as it is put in the song. Which, speaking of what the song is about, in the book Rust of Peace, Dave Mustaine writes in the section about five magics, quote, That was where I found the book Master of the Five Magics, and it fascinated me. Written by Lyndon Hardy and published in 1980, the fantasy novel follows the adventures of Alodar in the land Procolon as he seeks to distinguish himself sufficiently to earn the hand in marriage of Queen Vendora. He continues saying, quote, I read the book and I'm not a plagiarist, but the book influenced me considerably. I didn't even use the same five magics I made up my own. The song is basically a combination of that book and the 1981 movie starring Rutger Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer, Lady Hawk, a romantic fantasy involving dark magics and evil enchantments. But the song starts off much like the book, with our hero looking for these powers." End quote. So it seems, based on what Dave says here, is that he took influence and ideas from two different works and combined them into his own story. From the book The Master of the Five Magics, he took the concept of five magics and the wizard's quest to achieve power. And then from Lady Hawk, which I think Dave misspoke as it actually came out in 1985, he took the vibe and aesthetic of the film. You know, we'll get deeper into this as we work through the song and the lyrics, but generally, the song is about a hopeful wizard looking to gain power and defeat the evil prince, otherwise known in the song as the Abyss Lord. But enough of this, let us just get into the music finally. The song starts off with a bang right away as we are hit with this frenzied beginning motif riff, which we will again see later on in the song. This motif establishes some of the intervals we will see later, notably the flattened fifth of the E minor scale. This intro motif repeats itself about four times and then the guitars of Dave Mustaine and Marty Friedman hold an open E power chord as the drums and bass take over. This short beginning motif is representing a flash of power. Perhaps the young wizard hopeful, or hero, as Dave calls him, is witnessing the antagonist of the song, the quote, evil prince, or quote, abyss lord, committing some heinous acts. But we'll get into that later. As the guitars hold the E power chord, it firmly establishes the key of the song to be an E minor. Almost everywhere I looked online states the song is in A minor, but really this intro and the rest of the song I would argue is firmly in E minor. The bass being played by David Ellison plays a very dark and brooding sounding bass riff, which plays an ascending arpeggio which outlines a set of chords. These chords are E minor, E diminished, E minor, but a variant from the first one, and then E sus4 flat 6 add 9. I put the chord progression here on piano so it is easier to hear. Essentially, this is a very evil and foreboding sounding pattern, especially by adding the E diminished, which is utilizing the very evil sounding flattened fifth interval. Bass riff is accompanied by a very strange drum groove, one you don't really ever hear in thrash metal. You know, Nick Menz's work is great here. He plays a pattern with an open hi-hat on every second eighth note, a pattern which is very similar to the hi-hat pattern found in most house music, actually. He accents this with a kick every time David Elson hits the low E note. Great stuff, you know, they're just locked in together and it creates a sort of hypnotic vibe, builds tension, and captures your tension just right away. As the intro continues, the bass and drums are joined by a guitar played by Dave Mustaine.
This guitar plays a descending pattern which sounds very exotic and magical. This is due to the use of the note D sharp over top of what is already being played in an E minor scale with a flat and fifth. Very cool stuff. Essentially the harmonic minor is a regular minor scale with the seventh degree raised by one semitone to a major seventh interval. This is played over top of David Ellison's bass parts which contains a flat and fifth degree gives us an E minor scale feeling, which uses both flat and fifth and raised seventh intervals. This gives a very unique, a very dark and almost mystical sound to it here. Great stuff and some very unique note choices here. It is no wonder why this intro grabs my attention. Marty Friedman joins in, harmonizing Dave Mustaine's guitar in major and minor sixths and perfect fifths giving the part an even more exotic flourish to it. Really excellent stuff. Here, I put all these parts together so you can hear it. Here are the two guitar tracks by themselves. Here are the guitar tracks with the bass. And lastly, here is the guitar tracks with the chords underneath them instead. Great, unique, and melodically very interesting chords and note choices here by the band that really you don't see too often and gives a very, very unique sound to the intro of Five Magics. Excellent stuff. It feels like something is building. As the last notes of the guitar harmonies ring out, Nick Menza switches beats to a more traditional one played on the ride cymbal. The two guitars join the bass and playing the same bass riff as before, but obviously just an octave higher on the guitars. They also partially palm mute the notes here as well, which continues to build tension, while containing all the interesting melodic components from the previous riffs. Nick Manza also plays some cool little fills here. As the part ends, David Elfson hits a gigantic bass harmonic and the intro then repeats. The intro then repeats itself once again before we move on to the next section of the song. But let us talk about this intro thematically and story-wise here. What is the band trying to portray to us with this nearly two minute long intro? Well, as Dave Mustaine puts it, the hero is looking for powers. And to me, the wizard hopeful in question here is working on his powers, studying magic tomes and dark manuscripts by candlelight, practicing his magic spells and learning new incantations. This is what the intro is telling me. The leads played over the bass sound like someone pouring through texts and learning dark spells and incantations. When the guitars start playing the bass riff, it is like the hopeful wizard, our hero, is testing out his powers. The dark room in which he studies being illuminated with all sorts of colors from the spells. This is what the intro is telling us. The long extended intro also builds a ton of tension. And so, when the band shifts gears into the next section, it just hits that much harder. The next section starts with a short little guitar fill before we move into the next riff, which has the first vocal lines in it. This riff almost sounds like the band went up one half step to the key of F, but to me, they are now simply playing the flat second of the E minor scale, making this part of the song and a lot of the things going forward have an E Phrygian feel to it. Another dark sounding, very exotic scale, which is a pretty cool little effect here. Here we get the first lines of the song, which are call and response style, with the call being from Dave Mustaine's vocals, and the response being a short and sweet little solo from Marty Friedman. <laughs> Bestow upon me knowledge, wizard on the wing all lies. I want to rule this kingdom, make sweet the breeze, now defiled. The lyrics here are sung over top of the pedaled F power chord, and by pedaling that F power chord here, it adds extra tension, as this note F in the scale of E Phrygian 
wants to resolve down to E, or up to the minor third, which here is G. So at the end of the vocal lines, when the small solo sections begin, the band resolves down to, to the E power chord just as the solos begin, adding extra impact to those short and sweet little solos. Essentially, our character here, our hero, is schmoozing you know, the powerful arch wizard and asking him for knowledge and training in the magical arts so that he can rule this kingdom. Marty's solos act as the response from the arch wizard. The solos, which are mostly based on the E Phrygian scale, are in typical Marty Friedman style, excellent little solos that run up and down the fretboard and the strings. <laughs> These two solos see the Arch Wizard maybe showing off his powers and casting spells. He accepts the offer to tutor our character, our hero as Dave Mustaine puts it, and to give him guidance in the dark arts. Dethrone the evil prince's iron fists and velvet gloves of sin. Parade the grey-robed monks, the vestal virgins wheel the wyverns in. Both of these lines also follow a call and response style of solos. I'm not going to dive too deeply into the solos here as the solos of Rust of Peace will be a future video series, but we can imagine the arch wizard speaking back to the young wizard hopeful. To dethrone an evil prince with iron fists. The phrase iron fist in a velvet glove means to hide strength and determination behind gentleness or caution. So by splitting this up into two different phrases essentially, He's trying to say that the evil prince uses his power very openly and blatantly, while the challenger to the throne, the wizard hopeful, our hero, will conceal his true strength within his velvet gloves, acting cautiously, waiting for his time to strike. Velvet gloves of sin also implies that the magic he's attempting to learn may be of a dark and sinister kind. Dave Mustaine talks about the last phrase here in Rust in Peace. Quote, now one part comes directly from the book, the wyvern, and that's the only thing I lifted directly. Parade the gray robe monks and vestal versions wheel the wyverns in. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. I thought it sounded cool. End quote. <laughs> oh man, classic Dave Mustaine. You just have to love his bluntness in his books. As a side note, the vocal performance here is excellent. the evil branches, iron fists, and velvet gloves of sin. Great stuff. Anyways, this line, wheel the wyverns in, does indeed sound cool, and story-wise, we can assume that the grey-robed monks and vestal virgins help with a ritual that perhaps involves wyverns, which are a historical type of dragon. Maybe the wyverns need to be sacrificed in order to gain power. You know, parading monks implies some sort of ritual at the very least. <laughs> The song moves on into the next section, which is another ascending arpeggiated palm muted series of chords. These chords move up in chromatic fashion with the lowest string playing E, F, F sharp, and G in ascending order. The rest of the band plays an E power chord underneath it. This part is very cool. You know, not only is the chromatic movement interesting and different from what we already have heard before, but it also builds excellent tension. It sounds like a build up of magical energy that is barely being contained. <laughs> Here the ritual has begun, and the hero, the wizard hopeful's own powers are increasing with all the knowledge he is gaining. We now move into the fifth solo of the song. This solo seems to be undaunted by the strange chromatic riff being played underneath it. This solo also uses the flattened fifth, the raised seventh, and flattened second of the E minor scale to great effect. The arch wizard performs his duties at the ceremony, maybe reading out loud incantations and casting spells of his own. This is one of my favorite solos in Megadeth's catalog. Excellent stuff from Marty Friedman. As the solo ends, the chromatic arpeggiated riff is moved up an entire octave, raising the tension even higher. We get the next lines of the song, delivered one of Dave Mustaine's best vocal performances ever. Check out how he phrases the lyrics here. Let the ceremony cops quit the merits, let me be the protege if I match that. Let the ceremony consecrate the marriage, let me be the protege of five magics. As he sings the protege line, the band then plays the descending pattern. <laughs> The 
The whole song up until this point has been building to this moment. The song is a case study in how to build anticipation for a climax of the song. Thematically, this is the moment where the young wizard, our hero, has been waiting for as well. The ceremony is complete. The marriage, certainly not romantic marriage, must refer to the young wizard becoming wedded to the magical forces or dark arts, or perhaps even to the archmage himself as apprentice. Regardless, this build-up towards the climax of the song is absolutely fantastic. The picture painted by the sound is absolutely vivid and clear. Powerful magic force being barely contained by exalted wizards performing a dark ritual? Hell yeah, brother. Excellent songwriting from a song that at first glance appears to really have none. Now we get to the climax of the song. The chorus, I suppose, if you want to call it that. The band jumps up in tempo, playing this descending, crushing power chord pattern. Here the whole band joins together with gang chants to back up Dave's vocals and to give the chorus extra impact. Gimme alchemy, gimme wizardry, gimme sorcery, thermatology, electricity, magic if you please, master all of these, bring him to his knees. I really like how on the third bar of every measure the band adds in an extra power chord. It's a very nice little touch. Uh, I absolutely love this vocal part here. Get me alchemy! Get me wizardry! Get me sorcery! Thermatology! Not only Day's performance, but the gang vocals sound so powerful. I have a whole section on gang vocals in this video on Metal Vocals Explained, if you want to check that out. Link is here. All that tension being built up from the intro until now is being released. Who can't help but sing along to this? With the ceremony complete, the hero and archwizard now chant these lines together, a final act of union and explosion of their magical powers. The names of the five magics are based upon the book Master of the Five Magics, but Dave essentially made them up. Quote, Even though these five things are all individual, they're all the same. They're all magics, but they're all different. They're similar, but they're not. End quote. Ah, uh, thanks Dave. Always leaving us with just enough to go on and not enough to paint the full picture. We can surmise that he picked the names for these five magics because they sounded cool and rhymed. And well, you know, they do sound cool, especially when the gang vocals sing the names of the magics as well. Fantastic stuff here, and every time I listen to it, I can't help but shout out loud with the band. The next section sees the band jump up in tempo again, this time to a final tempo of 176 beats per minute. The band plays another riff which chromatically moves up on the low E string again, emphasizing the power rising of our hero as well as the Phrygian feel of the song. Very cool to see chromatic movements being used so melodically. Here the vocal harmonies is something Alice in Chains fans should be very familiar with. Live master! Five magics! And you know, remember this came out in 1990 before Facelift. Anyways, Dave Mustaine and David Elfson ritually chant the line, I master five magics. Perhaps these are the final lines in the ritual to be performed by both wizards together. To complete the ritual, these must be chanted. To master the five magics, they must chant these in harmony. Song-wise, it adds another layer of catchiness to the song, another hook that keeps you coming back and listening to this song. <laughs> The song then moves on into the next vocal section, which sees another calm response type of singing. This time, instead of solos, we get a distorted vocal effect, repeating the lines. Possessed with hellish torment, I master magics five. Hunting the abyss lord, only one will stay alive. Each response is being sung with this distorted effect on the vocals, which, according to Mustaine, was him singing into his hands. The riff playing underneath changes again, now with the band playing a more simple E-string chugging pattern. Again moving up to the flat second briefly before playing open E triplets while the distorted vocals come in. A nice touch which adds to the evil and derangedness of the distorted vocals. Very cool to see the guitars accenting the vocals in such a way. The riff again switches to an open E5 power chord while retaining the triplet chugging under the distorted vocals. Nick Benza gives us some excellent fills here again as well. His work on the song is very understated, but just fits the groove perfectly. He who lives by the sword will surely also die. He who lives in sin will surely live the lie. The lyrics in this part, as described by Dave Mustaine, are, quote, 
Notice after he goes, he who lives in sin, he is waiting, and when he says, will surely live the lie, there's no answer? Why is there no answer? Is he the bad guy, and I'm the good guy now? I've got the five magics, and I'm hunting the abyss lord, so obviously I'm the good guy. But who am I even talking to? Is it me? Is it Narcissus? Is it an echo? I don't want to be some f overly moral dude, but I do dig Aesop and how he always puts a good ending to his fables. I do not want people to think that there was anything good about black magic. That stuff wrecked my life for many years. People knew that I did witchcraft, but that's something I never wanted to be popular." End quote. So there you have it. Again, Dave Mustaine makes it clear as mud what is being talked about here. So let's break it down. The way I see it, the reason the hero gets no response to the last line is because he is now the master of the five magics. Nothing else he can be taught. Perhaps the arch wizard's essence has been absorbed into him. I also see it as a warning that magic, especially black magic, can cause you to lose yourself, lose your soul, and thus live a lie. As, is living with no soul even living at all? I also have to remind myself that Dave Mustaine wrote this book, Rest in Peace, decades after the release of Rest in Peace, the album, so of course his views and perspectives have changed, but story-wise, these last lines are the hero now all-powerful, selling his soul for ultimate power, and now he is looking to usurp the Abyss Lord from his throne. We get a simple choke from Nick Menza and the band plays the most intense and fast riff yet. This riff highlights both the flat 5 and raised 7 from earlier. A few more Slayer-esque cymbal chokes and power chord stabs and we are off onto the 6th and final solo of the song. The last solo section here is the battle between the hero and the abyss lord. The solo this time played by Dave Mustaine. The solo sticks mostly to the notes within the E minor scale, but he does throw in some color notes as well. I really think the beginning of the solo is very cool. I really like the high E string being used with notes way up on the fretboard. It creates a very unique and magical sound to it, almost like a sound effect one would use in a movie, especially as the first note jumps up and down two octaves essentially. Very cool. As the solo slash battle rages on, we get the opening motif from the beginning of the song played underneath it again. This is the Abyss Lord fighting back. The solo goes back and forth, Dave playing the same pattern every time the Abyss Lord fights back. <laughs> It is like he has learned the Abyss Lord's moves and is countering them. The song then ends with the opening motif being played four times instead of the regular two, and Dave moves the pattern he plays up an entire octave. This is the battle reaching its climax, the hero and Abyss Lord clashing in on titanic struggle for control. And then, the song simply ends. Does the hero come out on top? Does the Abyss Lord try to retain control? Perhaps we will never know, but from Dave's quote earlier about how he enjoys Aesop's good endings to his fables, we can assume that the hero triumphs, but at what cost? Perhaps that is the message Dave Mustaine is trying to leave us with. With dark powers, there is always a trade-off. Power for your soul? Power to live in sin and live a lie? Trading your soul to be the master of five magics. And that was Five Magics, one of Megadeth's best songs easily. A true masterclass in songwriting, riffage, and catchy hooks. Just because the song is a progressive track, that does not mean it can't have any catchy or memorable parts. And Five Magics is full of them. The song builds tension so masterfully, only to release it at the perfect moment. It works both thematically and song-wise. A hero learns a dark power from a superior wizard and uses it to defeat an evil prince. This whole story is told with 14 riffs and 6 solos in just over 5 minutes and 42 seconds. Easily one of the greatest metal songs ever written. The solos, riffs, vocals, bass, and drums are all locked in together so tight and are played so well. Just an absolutely fantastic song from a fantastic band on one of the greatest albums of all time, Five Magics. Thanks for tuning in again here, guys. This time around, I went a little bit deeper into the music theory of the song, so that is something that you guys like. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of Five Magics? What do you think of Five Magics? What do you think about my interpretation of the song? I'm always 
curious to hear your guys' thoughts. You know, while you're writing, make sure to hit that like and sub button, as it really helps the channel. If you like the work, consider buying me a cup of coffee. I will continue on the Sound of Perseverance and Rust in Peace deep dive series, but if there is some other song you'd like to see me cover, just make it a metal song. You know, let me know. Uh, another one I'm probably going to do is Holy Diver at some point. I would also like to do some Metallica and maybe some Tool songs, so maybe leave your suggestions down below. You know, I have to kind of think which of these bands will get clicks, right? I released one on Morbid Angel and Nevermore, two of my favorite bands, but they're not that popular. So if you want to go check those out, click here. But yeah, you know, I kind of have to take into account, will the video actually be popular? Because I'm not going to put in, you know, 20, 25, 30 hours of work into a video to only get like 900 views. You know what I mean? But yeah, you know what? Leave your suggestions down below. Thanks for watching, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. All your comments and everything like that make this worth it totally. So thank you so much. You know, love Megadeth. Rest in peace, Nick Menza. Cheers.